Lambdas allow capturing local variables either by value or reference. This has been their feature since introduction in C++11. Now we're getting more toys to play with. The feature in question is parameter pack support. In the previous video, we learned what parameter packs are and how they can be used. I strongly advise to watch it before watching this one to know what's going on. Okay, so let's dive into pack support for lambdas. Let me first show you one example for parameters and later for captures. Lambdas in C++20 support familiar template syntax. To learn about this one, take a look at my video explaining the feature. Apart from using traditional template lists, we can also specify packs. Let's take an example from the original pack video and create a lambda which will add an arbitrary number of arguments of arbitrary types. So we have cons out of add equals a lambda. Now we specify a parameter pack. So we have arbitrary number of types. And here we have arbitrary number of parameters of those arbitrary types. And each side, let's simply return a fold expression which will add all of this together. And we can call it like that. For example, an int and a double. This way we can add anything we want. As you can see, the functionality is the same as with normal functions. The arguments for using explicit template parameters for lambdas are exactly the same as with non pack cases. Example, easy access to static members or much better diagnostics. Without them, we could still use arbitrary number of parameters of arbitrary types using auto with an ellipsis. So we can simply remove explicit template parameters and put auto here. Again, everything builds. But now we would be limited by no access to the types themselves. Every such access would need a decal type. Example, here we have a very simple struct named widget with some constant inside. And let's suppose we would now like to extract this constant and add it together from all arguments passed in. So we would need to write decal type args value and here we can instantiate, for example, to widgets. Again, it builds, but it's very, very ugly. If we had those types, like in the previous example, we would have easy access to everything inside. Okay, another example of pack support is using packs in captures. Since C++20, we can capture packs coming from expressions. Let's consider an example of creating a lambda which will capture arbitrary arguments and use them in a call to another function. In short, something similar to stdbind. First, let's create a naive implementation. Okay, here we have our skeleton, we have some function foo, and we have a function call foo which will capture the arguments and return something which can be then called, which in turn will call foo itself. But what would that be? Of course, a lambda. So we return args captured by value and inside full of args. We can now simply create our lambda call full with an int and a double and call it. It works, but this code has a problem. Args are captured by value, which might be costly or have other side effects. It might even be impossible for some types. We also cannot leverage perfect forwarding. What we should do is forward the values to the lambda and then to the actual call, exactly what normal functions can do with packs. Fortunately, now we can use expressions along with packs for captures. So let's remove our lambda here and try something else. We would like to capture our pack of arcs, but we would like to apply an expression to it. So we start with three dots. Let's name those captured arguments as captured because why not? And they equal 
std forward of some t of arcs, a classic example of perfect forwarding. But now we need to do something new. We need to make the lambda mutable. So we add the mutable keyword inside. Let's call foo, but with using perfect forwarding again. So std forward of t, but this time of captured and three dots. And here, since our lambda is mutable, we need to remove const. Why do we need it to be mutable? Well, we need it because otherwise const could be added to the captured types, which will then kind of screw perfect forwarding. We need them to be exactly as they were passed. Here you go. You can see everything builds. You can see that we use the new feature of capturing by expression. So we capture our pack of arcs using perfect forwarding. We name them captured. And inside the lambda, we use perfect forwarding again to forward those captured values again to foo itself. And of course, we then call our lambda. If we had no possibility to use std forward while capturing, we wouldn't be able to capture by copying and by moving in the same capture without manually going argument by argument, which, well, defeats the point of making everything generic. And this is a very generic way to capture arguments and pass and mom. So here you go. One small change for lambdas can give us great opportunities to make code more generic and more robust. Okay, I hope you know now what parameter packs in Lambda captures are. I hope you found it informative. Hope you found it interesting. Hope you'll come up with various interesting ways to use those captures. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.